the common theme that I, we're going to touch on today for everything is the body learns movement through contraction. A contraction is how our, our brain converses with our body. Hey guys, welcome to the show. This is a speech and a seminar that I gave at um, one of Ellie's nutrition challenges that we were doing at CrossFit Lamb and, and we were talking about movement neurophysiology or exercise neurophysiology. We're talking about how to improve your movement and how to uh, be able to do any movement you want to do and how the body converses with itself through contraction. So guys, hope you enjoy this episode and we're gonna get into it. This is a revolution to fight for truth. Fight for the people who trust us with their health, and fight for research-backed action. This is a fight to purge baseless trends and customs in healthcare. This is a revolution to change the steps of healthcare from reactive medicine to preemptive medicine. Our vision is to be a catalyst for a system of proactive healthcare versus reactive healthcare. This is Impetus Health. Well, guys, thank you for having me. It's going to be fun. So we're just going to talk about movement today. The title of it is Exercise Neurophysiology, but I want you to think about it as the brain-to-body connection as it pertains to movement. We're going to talk about how we can train movement and make our movement better. I do want to say this. Thank everybody for being here and listening to me. I'm glad I'm not speaking to two people. Appreciate that. Um, But it is no wasted endeavor to try to make your body better. And anything you do that can improve yourself is always a good time spent. So let's get into it a little bit. Okay, so how do we learn movement? And we're going to touch on a lot of things here, but unfortunately, our mind is not pre-programmed to do perfect movement. If it were, then Judd could pick up a basketball and she would look like (laughs) Steph Curry. But we've seen Judd shoot a basketball and it's beautiful, Judd. Doesn't always have the end result we're looking for. But if if the mind was pre-programmed, we'd be able to squat, be able to snatch, be able to clean without ever really having to worry about it. But it's not. So... To program it, we have to do the programming ourselves, okay? And that's not always the easiest process, but the body moves according to how it's trained. So, I have all these numbers up here kind of floating around because we tend to think that the body moves in degrees and it moves in numbers. The The body does not think about numbers. It says, what have I done before to put on this movement? So when it sees a set of stairs, when it sees a snatch, when it sees a barbell, it sees a back squat, it says, initiate pattern. Whatever pattern you've programmed from that, it's gonna do. So if you've always uh, done a back squat, look a low bar back squat, and you try to do a high bar back squat, your body's not really gonna know how to do that very well. So we have to program our body to move according to what we're gonna do. So uh, another example of that is, um, if you're about to snatch, and uh, you try to hit a snatch and you miss your first snatch, okay? You come off the bar, you get back on it, and you hit your second snatch. Have you, have you gotten stronger in that 30 second window that you just came off? No, your body recalibrated. You missed the movement, it adjusted in its mind, it put the numbers together, although it's thinking of the patterns you've done in the past, and then it's initiated the pattern again to hit the movement the second time. So, how do we learn movement? We have to program our bodies for the movement that we're talking about. That's really what we're talking about today, is how to program your body for better movement. Okay, now you see this is a quote I saw them out. So, this is how complex the mind is. The human brain has 100 billion neurons, each neuron connected to 10,000 other neurons. Sitting on your shoulders is the most complicated object in the known universe. Our mind is complicated and we really don't understand it very well. We know very little about the brain, but we do know (laughs) some things. The common theme that we're going to touch on today for everything is the body learns movement through contraction. A contraction is how our our brain converses with our body. So if there's no contraction, there's no learning. Okay, and we can get into static stretching and all the other things. We're going to talk about that a little bit as we go. But anytime you're doing a movement, the more contraction you can have with a good movement, the more you're going to solidify that pattern. If you contract heavy around really poor movement, you're going to have a really poor movement next time you do it. You're never, it's never going to be a great movement. You're always going to have poor movement. But if you contract and teach your body how to move, then all of a sudden you're going to have a good pattern. Your body wants to default into a state that helps it conserve energy. That's why whenever you're, that's why whenever you're moving, you're not always gonna move with the best form. Now that, that doesn't mean it's right, and we're gonna talk about is good form important, but the body wants to conserve energy. We have to teach our body how to utilize the energy we have to achieve a movement, okay? So just conserving energy is not gonna cut it in the world of movement. All right, 
let's just go on. So let's talk about, I want to talk about a few things. Um, and this is kind of a segue, but I want to get into it. So we have this beautiful color-coded brain. If you've ever seen a brain, you'll realize it is actually not color-coded. It's pink and it's mush. And if it's in a dead person, you pull it out of them, it's white. Um, so we're going to go, with the, but this is kind of what we know about the brain. So you have the frontal lobe, prefrontal cortex, you have these different areas and they all, we, we love to think about it as something happens in this area lots up or something happens in this area lots up, but it really doesn't work like that. Something happens and it, something happens. Maybe uh, let's do something really drastic. Um, someone dies. Emotion flares, but how that emotion happens in the frontal lobe affects everything else everything else. There's stories about someone dying and people, their, their vision being splotchy. Like they, everything affects everything. So what enters the brain affects every aspect of it. The areas that we tend to think about when we think about movement are the motor cortex. So this is how you send a contraction to the body. The cerebellum, which is the balance area. You hear about people getting hit in the back of the head and they can't balance. Um, and over here in this blue area, this is something called the basal ganglia. Okay, the basal ganglia is what we think about when somebody has Parkinson's and they can't really have pass point and they can't really reach for something. This is the area that controls aberrant movement. So it doesn't allow movement to be real shaky. It gives you smooth movement. We tend to think about movement in those three areas, but all of these areas pertain to movement and they all facilitate movement in one way or the other. Actually, if you get into it a little bit, a lot of these memory areas light up a ton when you do a movement a ton and it's interesting how we get into reflex loops but so i wanted to touch on this a little bit and how this plays a role so let me use a couple examples um let's say for instance i'm about to do a really heavy snatch and i'm winding up i'm getting down i'm getting all my stuff ready and i look up and i see ellie <laughs> standing in front of me doing carrie pierce abs oh. So I'm standing there and I'm about to hit this snatch and all of a sudden I'm like, what in the crap is she doing? And that throws off my, my all of a sudden my occipital lobe, my vision says, what the heck is she doing? That makes me kind of emotional and now my motor cortex thrown off and I can't contract very right. So it makes me emotional because you're doing carry, I don't have abs like that. Gosh. So that's one example. Another example, let's say you get a big back slap. Okay, you're about to, you're about to do something. Somebody comes and smacks you in the back. I mean, that's going to light up your somatosensory cortex. You just had a noxious stimuli placed in your body. Everything's going to be jacked up. Your adrenal gland is going to be going crazy. Now you have pain. What happens when you have pain? All of a sudden, my knee hurts when I'm trying to squat, so I'm not going to get on this right knee. I'm going to shift to the left. We start facilitating a movement pattern that's not good, that's going to cause issues down the road. And we're going to talk about, is it really going to cause issues down the road? How important is good movement? And pain, when you start having pain, it actually shuts off motor fibers. Motor neurons will not contract or not fire when you have pain because the body's saying, hey, we got to get out of this. We got to stop this. So moving. Oh, go back. So my, I'm skipped too early. I have three steps we're going to talk about today. And these are really, really simple steps, super simple steps. But we're going to talk about the science behind each step. Science is complex, but the steps are simple. So step one, just do it with purpose. So what I'm saying there before we, if, if you have fear in your heart from that math problem, don't worry about it. We're going to talk about it. Um, but step one is just do it well, or just do it with purpose. So just doing a movement is not going to cut it. Okay. Just going in here and saying, I'm going to squat a couple times and be done with it. You have to have a goal. You have to have a purpose with your movement. That's why CrossFit is so effective and strength conditioning and uh, trying to actually build weight and do certain things with your body is so effective because there's a, it's goal oriented. When you fail your goal, that is the data collection the mind needs to help you achieve the goal the, goal the next time. So if, there's, if you have nothing to fail, if there is no goal, then how are you going to improve your movement? So you have to have purpose and you have to do it well. If you, like I said before, if you do a poor movement pattern over and over and over again, and you expect to do a good movement pattern eventually, it's not going to happen. You've never put the good stuff in your, in your body. So we're going to use this equation. I see one of the most common equations that the body uses. This is the equation for... times the distance between the rotational areas like the hip joint and the, and the, and the distance in the object. So the, from the rotation and the object. The body, when it does a movement, it's applying these numbers. It's applying this math. But again, it doesn't think about the numbers. It thinks about the pattern. So whenever you're trying to solidify a good movement, if you're doing it, if you've done a, a back squat like this a ton, 
all of a sudden when you try and you see somebody else hit a really powerful back squat and they're in a really good form, you're not going to be able to do it. You're going to be weaker actually because the body doesn't know that pattern. It hasn't contracted the muscle fibers in that way to do this and the body learns through contraction. If you've never contracted that way, it will not be able to. But the more you contract that way, whether you're trying to learn a math problem or do a movement, the body will learn how to utilize those fibers with less energy consumption as you go. So when you do a movement with purpose, when you have a goal and you fail that goal, that is what your mind needs to say, what do I need to do the next time to achieve that goal? And how can I do that? But doing it with purpose. And if you don't know what purpose is, find somebody who does. If you want to learn how to shoot a basketball, watch Kobe Bryant. If you want to learn how to snatch, watch Lou Jalgin. If you want to, don't just sit here and be like, okay, I'm just going to take any Joe Blow's uh, answer off the street because we don't know that. Look up someone who is an expert or ask someone who's an expert and learn that way. You'll save yourself a lot of time, a lot of pain. Um, a few things I want to touch on here. So yes, a few things. Um, in healthcare, and that's the field that I'm in, if fitness is the very root of healthcare, and the body likes to think of things in degrees, and I mentioned this a few times, we can't think about them in degrees, we have to think about the pattern. So if we're going to train a pattern, is it worth it? Is training a good movement pattern actually worth it? Is it going to make you healthier? Is it going to make you thriving? Jake spoke last week on holistic health and how he said that um, if you are not thriving, if you can't do everything you want to do, then, then he, I cannot say you are holistically healthy. Can't say that. So if we take and apply here, the question is, does having poor movement, am I still holistically healthy if, I, if I'm a poor mover? And I say you are not. Because if there are certain things you can't do, and I'm not talking about sports specific, not like hitting a golf ball, not shooting a basketball, um, not snatching, not clean and jerking, not sports specific things like this, those will help, man, those will help. The more you contract and the, the, the stronger you get and the heavier of a contraction you're able to light up those motor neurons, the more you're going to learn. So sports-specific training can help, but that's not the focus. If you can't press your arm straight up overhead standing up, I'll go a step further. If you can't hit the bottom of the squat and drive straight up, you are missing movement, okay? A lot of people say, man, my shoulders are just too tight or my back's too tight. I can't really do this. A mobility issue is just a symptom of a stability issue. Anytime you have a tight shoulder, a tight hip, anything like that, that is not a mobility problem. Mobility is a symptom of a deeper core problem, a stability problem. And a stability problem is a lack of connection between the brain and the movement. Okay? So if I, my shoulders say shoulders are tight, I can only go to here. Man, anything past this is really tight. That's because the brain has said this area is not safe. Okay, so we're going to lock you down to here. So we got to work on the motor connection in this range to allow us to enter that range, to allow the brain to go into that range. Mobility is not the problem. It's a symptom. Stability is, tends to be the problem. That's the mind to movement connection. And number three, another thing I want to touch, touch on is there is an optimal movement for everything we do, but this can vary upon what, what, what stimulus we're doing. So I'll go back to that one at max snatch. If I'm going to do a one at max snatch, I'm going to set everything up because my goal is to hit the heaviest weight I can to hit the hit. No matter what, hit the heaviest weight I can. My goal is to hit this weight. Now I'm doing 30 snatches for time. My goal is to not hit the weight. It's to, it's to finish these 30 snatches as fast as possible. I'm going to have a different movement pattern for each of those, and that's fine. There is nothing wrong with that because the goal is different. Depending on your goal, you could be doing the same movement, but your pattern will be different because the brain doesn't necessarily say initiate snatch pattern. It says initiate my fastest snatch pattern. Okay. All right. All right, so step two is just do it often. I have in parentheses regimented, and this is a little video of this guy trying to learn how to do a backflip. He learns how to do a backflip in a whole day. It's just him clipping through it. I think it takes him about four hours, but he does it often. That's a really oversimplistic way. I included regimented. Yeah, <laughs> it gets kind of funny. I'm watching this other video. I included regimented in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty bad in a second, but, um, but uh, I included regimented in there because just, just doing something often does not work. Okay, so for instance, if you want to get better at back squatting and you say, I'm going to back squat heavy every day, your, bo your body's going to blow up. You're not going to be able to rebuild. You're not going to be able to regenerate what you need. So <laughs> the body's going to start falling apart. You can't do it every day. But if it's a simple movement like a backflip, 
you can do this. I mean, you're, he's landing on the mattress. You're not going to hurt yourself. He can do this as much as he wants to. You need to figure it out. <laughs> Let's see. He can land on his neck and get hurt. <laughs> he does hurt himself a little bit. It turns into dark time. You got it, bud. I see. But eventually he hits the backflip. Um, but so I want to say, hold on, let me see this. Like I said, you got to do it regimented. So there is a curve of strength conditioning. So you're building strength, you're building strength, you're building strength. You're having that. You're squatting two, maybe three times a day. You're hitting that sweet spot. If you go into four, five, six times a day of heavy, heavy squatting, all of a sudden you're going to curve down because the body's not rebuilding. You have to teach it how to rebuild. And your movement's not going to learn because your body's broken at that point. So it's not going to be able to do it. And we're going to talk about this a little bit more in a second, but I want to talk about step three. So the first two steps are um, you want to do it with purpose. You want to have a really goal-oriented movement pattern, and you want to do it often. You want to do it regimented. You want to do that movement often enough to learn it. Step three is when you try to learn a movement. When I first started doing CrossFit, um, I realized that I was one of the poor, poorest movers, movers in the gym. I could not do an overhead squat in my life. So I actually went and Olympic lifted for two months just to figure this stuff out, just to figure it out. And the whole time I would spend about 30 to 45 minutes of stretching and mobility beforehand. And that stuff didn't tend to work very well for me. Some, some aspects of it did, and we're going to touch on that too. But when you try to learn something new, we tend to waste a lot of time doing things like what this top person doing. We're going to talk about, because one of the common questions I get all the time is, should I stretch this? How should I stretch? What's going on? Stretching is not bad, but our, the way we term stretching is poor. So I want to talk about it. So I have no idea what movement she's trying to warm up for. I can't think of a movement unless she's about to do a toes to bar. That could be one thing that this would be a good stretch for. So think about when you stretch think about the function that's following okay so i can't think of a function that's going to follow this position but if we come down here look at this guy boom 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 this is the angle of a squat if he's about to squat he's trying to open his ankles up he's trying to get into his ankles this is the position he's about to hit several times this is the position you need to try to stretch in okay and a stretch what has the body learn the body learns through contraction yes here, she's just kind of hanging out. She's just really relaxing. There's not really much, maybe she feels a stretch through her hamstring. If you've ever put, that looks like 70 pound dumbbell. If you ever put 70 pounds or heavy weight on your body, your whole body is contracting to stabilize this thing. Your ankle's trying to contract to stabilize it too. You're having an isometric contraction while this is going on. So anytime you're trying to warm up for a functional movement or any movement at all, Put yourself in a position where you're working the end range. You're stretching, but that stretch is having a contraction through it the entire time. It's lighting up the motor neurons. We're learning, and he's going to be able to apply this to the squat he's about to get into. So step three. Step three is basically just do step one and two, and don't waste your time. Okay, so we've talked about three. I got, I got to touch on this because this is the reason why we're here. It's, an account, it's a nutrition challenge, an accountability challenge. And I have to say... Exercise limiters, the foundation of health, nutrition, exercise, and sleep is up there as well, mindfulness and purpose. Uh, but if you guys know anything about the Kobe and Shaq beef, one of their big reasons they couldn't stand each other is because Kobe walked in and saw Shaq eating four Big Macs before a basketball game and Kobe blew up on him and it went from there. But um, anyway, so if you're not eating right, you have limited your motor neurons ability to fire. If you're not eating correctly, if you're not fueling your body very well, Judd, I know you're shaking your head. I know you, you must have had a bad week. I'm sorry. If you're not, if you're not fueling your body well, then your body's not recovering. If your body's not recovering, then it can't learn movement. It can't learn how to contract very well. And sleep, 75% of the human growth hormone you have in your body is produced during sleep. Okay, if you are not sleeping, you are not recovering, and you're not allowed to build, you have limited your ability to contract a muscle and your body's ability to learn is crushed. Okay, you have to have those two in place to be able to really, really take advantage of all the exercise you're doing and to learn movement properly. So, can drinking breast milk replace the lack of age you get from sleep? It depends on what kind of person you are. Um, so, uh, as a, I, I, as a summary of what we talked about, remember three steps. If you're going to move, the body learns through contraction. If we're going to move, we got to move well and with purpose. We've got to do it often. And don't waste your time with all this other stuff. Just focus on the first two, okay? And diet and nutrition helps. But 
All right, guys, that's all I got. Thank you all.